Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe stabilizing selection and directional selection. In a recent video we looked at continuous variation. Many features show continuous variation, for example height in humans. Remember that for a feature showing continuous variation, organisms can have any value between the smallest value and the greatest value. In continuous variation we see a normal distribution, such as the one I'm showing you here. Features that show continuous variation are often controlled by a number of genes acting together, and scientists call these polygenes. Often environmental factors also play a role. Now a good example of a feature showing continuous variation is birth weight in humans. In the 1930s and 40s, scientists analyzed how the mortality of babies varied with their birth weight, and I'm showing you that here. Now I've not put any values on this graph because it's more important that you understand the pattern. The dotted line shows the percent mortality. Scientists found that babies with a very low or high birth weight were less likely to survive than those with a birth weight around the mean. Now this is an example of stabilizing selection. Stabilizing selection takes place when environmental conditions are not changing. In stabilizing selection, any extremes of phenotype are selected against. In this case, the extremes of phenotype are very low birth weight and very high birth weight. Babies born with these birth weights have a higher mortality rate than those born with a birth weight around the mean. Now genetics play a major role in birth weight. So because babies with a very low or very high birth weight are less likely to survive, the alleles contributing to these birth weights are less likely to be passed on. This means that over time, birth weights will stabilize towards the mean, with less variation at the extremes. So stabilizing selection takes place when environmental conditions are not changing. However, when environmental conditions change, a different kind of selection can take place. This is called directional selection. Imagine we have a population of birds which use their beaks to open seeds for food. Beak size varies around the mean, with some birds having a relatively small beak and some having a relatively large beak. Imagine that the climate becomes drier and plants produce harder seeds. Now birds with a smaller beak size struggle to open the seeds for food. Birds with a larger beak size have a selective advantage and are more likely to survive and reproduce. Over time, the alleles for larger beak size become more common in the gene pool, and the effect of this is to shift the mean towards a larger beak size. So this is an example of directional selection. Another example of directional selection is seen with antibiotic resistance in bacteria. Antibiotic resistance occurs when a bacterium acquires a random mutation to a gene. In the absence of antibiotic, resistant bacteria have no advantage over non-resistant bacteria. So in the absence of antibiotic, the number of bacteria with antibiotic resistance is relatively low. However, in the presence of antibiotic, resistant bacteria have a selective advantage. Resistant bacteria can survive and reproduce in the presence of antibiotic, whereas non-resistant bacteria are killed by the antibiotic. So over time, the gene for antibiotic resistance becomes more common in the population. So in directional selection, one phenotype is selected over another phenotype, and directional selection takes place when the environment changes. In the case of antibiotic resistance, the environmental change is the presence of antibiotics. So in this case, the antibiotic is acting as a selection pressure. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe stabilizing and directional selection.